Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 451, Hypothyroid Protocols. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. As a medical office, Dr. Maupin's practice primarily focuses on the replacement of lost hormones, hormone replacement therapy through the use of bioidentical pellets. But one of the things that is a consistent theme in the information that she gets from patients and treatment concerns that she has in her office is how do we manage thyroid appropriately? Because thyroid is also a critical hormone. You have to have it for your cells to work the way they're supposed to work. You have to have it in the right amounts and your thyroid can be overactive or underactive and it can even be dead. And then somebody has to replace what the thyroid naturally presents. But there are disagreements among specialists about what the right way to find out that you have a thyroid problem is, the measure the degree of that problem and to treat it. And what Dr. Maupin is consistently saying in all of these podcasts and her work uh, with all of her patients is that she believes that you use medical tests and look at data and numbers, but you use them as a complement to treating symptoms. When somebody comes in and says, I have a problem, I'm in pain, I am cold all the time, I can't think the way that I I remember thinking, I, I just don't know what to do. She wants to find a solution for those symptoms that you are aware of or that are causing you pain. That is not the way some other doctors treat it. They treat it according to a statistical code that comes on your blood test uh, and, and whether you're in a range that's called normal. One of the things that we found over the last several years is that the normal ranges issued by the major labs in the United States when they do blood tests have been expanding. And we don't know why, but they have been. So so what used to be normal was a tighter category than what's normal now. And it's only expanding in the uh, toward the lower numbers. So basically okay. it tells people they don't have low thyroid when so 100 ten, used five to be low, years ago, now five years ago is low. Yeah. yeah. So so they tell but it's it they're smaller numbers, but yeah. but they but basically the whole group of what's op- normal for thyroid is now a lower number, so people aren't getting treated. But they still have all the symptoms. And many of the symptoms are, are like signs that you can see, like really dry skin and, a, and um, swollen. I can have people like show me their tongue, and they have a swollen tongue that they're biting on the edges, and that's one of the signs. I look at their eyebrows. Like their tongue is too big for their mouth yeah. all of a sudden. And they're biting on it. Yeah. And okay. so they have teeth marks down that. Uh-huh. And then I look at their eyebrows. And if I have to ask women if they penciled them in because it's kind of hard to tell. So I look at their eyebrows. And if they had the outer third of their eyebrows gone, no hair there, then that's hypothyroidism. It's the only thing that can cause that is hypothyroidism. Thinning hair. They have thinning hair. They have no hair on their legs. They aren't shaving their legs anymore mm-hmm. or their arms. So these are, these are like physical signs that show you that you have it. And then all of the symptoms that Brett was telling you about, including constipation. I mean, other physical things that you, would bother you if you became well, constipated. We'll, we'll post this list so you can see yes, it on the screen behind us. and so you can us. take but care of it. There's about 15 or 20 symptoms that you can present with, and, and rarely is it a single symptom. Right. That's uh, right. And so most of the time what we do is every time a patient comes in, at first when we're trying to diagnose them, we ask for all the symptoms. Then we ask, is this better? Is this better? Is this better? So that's how we can tell if our uh, medication level is right. And you because, do that in conjunction with the blood test and yes. the medicines. So we, so we would have a patient come in for follow-up after we've started medicine. And we, of course, look at all the things that we looked at last time in terms mm-hmm. of eyebrows and dry skin, that kind of thing. We'd ask them about it as well. But then we'd go through each symptom that they had had in the beginning and ask them if they still have it or if it's halfway better. 
And, so, and that would help us so, figure out if, if their drugs or their medication was uh, enough. What always amazes me about medicine, though, is that some of these symptoms are also symptoms of other things. They are. So, like, uh, one of them is can cause syncope or fainting. Syncope. So, syncope. Yes. So if you just stand up and get really dizzy mm -hmm. and wobbly and or even pass out, mm -hmm. sit back down really quickly, I've always associated that symptom with, with blood with pressure heart, issues heart and, and blood heart pressure. problems. Yeah. yeah. It can be low blood pressure, but you can get low blood pressure from low thyroid. You can get low pulse from low thyroid. That's, so you those become things, more lizard-like with the low yes, thyroid. Yeah, you do. You become it, very cold. cold, so you don't burn any calories. Uh -huh. So you can almost not eat and stay the same weight or gain weight because you, you become very efficient. Well, that's not good for your cells. Your cells need to make heat, and your enzymes in your body aren't going to work unless they have heat. So it provides a really important function. But I'm looking at symptoms people that can... can tell me about that right. they experience, not be, not just because I want them to feel good, but that's my, my information telling me, do I have enough thyroid on board? So I look at both their labs and that. Well, and there are two elements of concern there, one which we can measure, which is how much thyroid hormone you have, mm -hmm. but the other is how well are your receptor sites for thyroid mm -hmm. working. And we can't measure those. We really. don't have a way to measure that at all. So that's what makes just looking at your lab tests not work. If we just look at your lab tests and say, don't look at you, don't ask you about your symptoms, and we say, yeah, you're, you're, you're fine because your lab tests look fine, that's, they're looking at the level of your T4 and your T3 hormone. That doesn't mean that they're actually working, that they're hooking up with the cells and they're actually making the cells do what they're supposed to do. So T4, T3, T meaning thyroid. Thyroid. Uh, and three and four are just three elements. Three and four are the two uh, most most prevalent thyroid hormones in hu in a, uh, humans. Is that TSH and FSH? No, TSH no. is the stimulating hormone for thyroid, and that's <laughs> interestingly enough. If it's high, usually that means your thyroid's low, and if it's low, it usually means your thyroid's high, but not always. <laughs> usually, so yeah. it's not. It's so then you usually, look at other symptoms. So, like, you, so you can't just look at that, and that's what most doctors are told to look at. Uh -huh. Is just TSH, which isn't a, a direct test. So they're not look. They're like looking at a mirror. They're not looking at the the level in your blood. And so, it doesn't address receptor sites or receptor site no, issues at all. It doesn't. So I could have somebody with all these symptoms uh -huh. and. Looks, they look swollen and puffy eyes and no eyebrows, and they have a normal blood test. And that's right. because there's something wrong with their receptor sites on all the cells of their body. They may have an antibody there, or, or it may have been genetically changed, or they may have a heavy metal that's blocking their thyroid. So it it's actually has to do with their own thyroid. So what we do is we give them pig thyroid, which is much like adult adult human thyroid. Which, which is, is different from synthyroid, which is the most commonly given thyroid. Right. Synthroid is a, is a chemical thyroid. It is only T4, and it was only tested on men. So it does work really well on men, but on women it doesn't. Women have trouble making T4 into T3, but men don't. And most GPs, if they offer a prescription for thyroid, will give you... Synthroid. Synthroid. So... I give men Synthroid generally to start out with and, and see if that works for them. It's trial and error, and I give women Armour Thyroid, which is pig thyroid, or Nature Thyroid, or WP Thyroid. They're all uh, pig thyroid, basically. Yeah. I know. Uh, well, well I'm laughing because she tried Synthroid on me, and it didn't work. So then she tried Armour Thyroid, which is a pig thyroid. So I got a prescription for thyroid tablets, and I'm taking them. And uh, a couple months into the treatment... Kathy, who, and we didn't run any of this through insurance, but the pharmacy has a collected database. So I got a letter from my insurance company, as did Dr. Maupin, saying, do you understand, Dr. Maupin, that Armour Thyroid is not the indicated treatment, uh, the standard of care for an elderly gentleman? And she said, well, what do you want me to do with this? I said, yeah. Write them a letter and tell them mind their own business. It's none of their business. Yeah, we didn't send it through insurance. It shouldn't really be. We're not really asking them to pay for it. Yeah, they don't yeah. pay for it, so it shouldn't have been any of their business. But when did they? When did they decide it's not good for you know? And who how decided? did they decide yeah. it? And when was this, when was there a study? And right. and honestly, I've been using it on every age 
yeah. uh, patient forever, and it has we haven't had problems. But with you it. do start men on Synthroid mm-hmm. first, and mm-hmm. women you already know they don't respond to Synthroid. In general, and it they wasn't don't. tested on women. Right, it was never tested no. on women. So when the FDA tested it, he they just tested on that. So, so let's run through this list okay. of symptoms, and right. they, they can see it behind mm-hmm. us. Depression, weight gain. Swelling. And when you say swelling, Swelling, where? I mean like swelling all over. Like your eyes are swollen, your face you looks puffy. rounder, your hands, yeah, puffy. Your hands, your rings don't don't come off. Your ankles are swollen. I'm not talking just about ankle swelling. I'm talking about all over your body swelling. Do you get that from too much salt intake? Usually if you get too much salt, you, your rings will get tight and your ankles will get swollen and that's it. Okay. This is just the whole body. Okay. And is that because of fluid retention or is it's that? fluid retention. Okay. You can't process, you can't get the fluid out of your tissues because the thyroid's not working. This one you mentioned, loss of hair and eyebrows. Brittle nails. Mm-hmm. They, so your nails get... Chip or tear? They or? chip and they peel. Peel. And, so, and not like peeling uh, fingernail no, polish. No, I'm not off, talking but. about fingernail polish. I mean, yeah. your own fingernails. Yeah. And that's always a problem because most of my patients have fingernail polish on. So, so how do you know? You or how to, do they yeah, know? Yeah. Right. Constipation, so, loss of periods, lack of sweating. Yeah. When you exercise, if you don't sweat... You might have low thyroid. And again, if you're retaining fluids and you're not mm-hmm. sweating, yeah. you aren't cooling yourself down. No. I mean, there, so there's a lot of stuff that's not happening that should right, be happening. But, you're, but even when you're exercising, you're not burning the right. calories that you should be burning because you're not making heat. Because <laughs> so, the furnace is not on. That's right. The furnace is not on in every single cell without yeah. your thyroid. And some other things. Go ahead. Let's go through okay. this. And then I want to talk about the other Dry eyes. Things. Very dry skin. Like dry like, skin. Like I can see, it looks like tiles. Like flaky. Like, yeah. Like round like scales tiles. On fish. It's like scaly. Yeah. So I've, yeah, I've seen that before. Inability to think. I have this a lot, but I'm not sure it's related to thyroid. That could be low testosterone and that could be getting older and that could be, but your your inability to think comes back when your testosterone's given. So that's. One hopes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sleeping too much. Loss of hunger with weight gain. So you put on weight, but you don't feel hungry. You're not hungry. And a lot of times people <laughs> who I give thyroid to go, I'm hungry now. I don't want to be hungry. I'm like, but but you're burning the calories now. Uh-huh. So so it's okay because now you're going to lose weight. Well, but... and the paradox is before you were, you were uh, not hungry, but you were gaining weight. Yeah. Now you're hungry and you're not gaining weight. Right. That's right. Or you may be losing weight. Cold hands and feet. Now, in there, it's like Renault's disease. Renault's disease can be cold hands and feet, but they're different. It's not just cold. They're red, white, and blue. I mean, they turn different colors and they hurt. Okay. So cold hands and feet is just cold hands. Like somebody shakes my hand and it's freezing cold, but it's not white, blue, or red. It's just cold. Yeah, I remember many years ago, I took a student on a, a group of uh, uh, to a tour of Washington, D.C. when I was mm-hmm. teaching high school. And one of the girl's father was a physician. And he pulls me aside as we get on the plane. He says, I want you to know that my daughter has Renault's disease. I'm like, what the heck is that? Yeah, right. I had never heard of it, but it, mm-hmm. that's what it was. And yeah. he was concerned that she would have a flare up or something, and that I would get. She knew what she had. To. It's an autoimmune problem, and yeah. it's 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 an autoimmune problem that compromises the blood vessels, so it makes them all constrict, so you don't get any blood to your hand. So that's the white, and then they and then they dilate. Well, they constrict. They go white, then they go blue. Then they dilate and they turn red Flush and they red. hurt yeah. when they do that. Yeah. So, so it's a different thing, okay. and that's why we have. That's why a doctor has to ask you about this, and you have to have more than one of these symptoms. You have to have a group of them. And and then my wife has cold feet a lot. I mean, if she touches me with her feet. It's a shock for me. Still. And it's not so much now, but for years she, she used did. To. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because she's treated as well. <laughs> yeah, feeling cold all the time. Slow pulse and low blood pressure. Mm-hmm. So does thyroid raise or lower your b- blood pressure? It brings it up to normal. Okay. It doesn't make it doesn't high. make it high. But it brings it to normal, and your pulse comes up to normal. I remember my mom had a pulse of forty, and no one would give her enough thyroid. I mean, this is one of the one of the reasons our family, my whole family, every woman on my mother's side of the family has low thyroid. I mean, they either get treated or don't. But she had a very low pulse, so. She did. She tried to get more thyroid, and they wouldn't give it to her. And basically, she had a hard time staying awake. She had a hard time just doing anything because her blood pressure was so low and her pulse was so low. So, so then, what you recommend for people if if they yes. have a combination of these symptoms, and you're talking to them, you say, "Okay, here's what we want to do. 
We want to check your labs initially when you come in. So we're going to take your blood test mm-hmm. and find out where you, where all these things are. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to follow up once a year with that? To Well, at first we follow up in a couple months. Okay. We do some more blood work after you're on medication. So I start women on Armour Thyroid. I start men on Synthroid. And there's a, based on your weight, we start on different dosages. So we figure that out based on your weight. And, and, you, then, and you monitor their, their basal temperature yeah, so, as well. And basically for women... Men don't tend to do this as much, but for women, we monitor their base basal temperature. If I do that, if their lab tests look normal, but they have all the symptoms, then the lab tests aren't going to tell me what I need to know. So I, instead of monitoring with lab tests, I use the basal body temperature. So you take a temperature before you get out of bed in the morning, and if you have a low thyroid, it's less than 98 and if it's and if you have normal thyroid, it should be 98 or above. So another thing that you talk about all the time, especially in the Midwest, is we live in what's called an iodine sink. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that you test for with thyroid imbalances is are they getting enough iodine? Right. And so and we check that. Usually we give iodine when we give thyroid because it works better when you have iodine. But we there's no iodine in the Midwest, all the way up to. North Dakota, there's no iodine. And you can get iodine as a tablet. It's called a product iodorol. called iodorol. Mm-hmm. And it's just a tablet you take every day. And... With a pinch of salt. Yeah. And you can even take it with your thyroid. Uh-huh. That's a that's a little known thing that I learned at the last conference. With Put the, them in together. You can take them together. Okay. So, so we give iodine to help the thyroid work better and have the receptor sites work better. So if you are going to put somebody on... Uh, Either type of mm-hmm. thyroid. Mm-hmm. You're also going to give them iodine if they need it, mm-hmm. uh, and magnesium. And I give them magnesium because the biggest the biggest risk or the biggest complaint we have when somebody's put on thyroid, it's it's not that it's necessarily too much. They have a reaction by ha- of having a fast heart rate. So oh. it doesn't mean their dose is too high. It means they're having a reaction, and that usually is only because they have low magnesium. So you have to have enough magnesium in your body for your heart so that you don't get a fast So I remember a product when I was a child watching television. Mm-hmm. It was advertised all the time, Philips Milk of Magnesia. Yeah. Is, is that what you're talking about? No, or? that's not okay. what I'm talking about because that can give you diarrhea. I mean, well, honestly, that would feel good to some of these gals because they've had constipation. <laughs> yeah. but, but the thyroid fixes the constipation, so you don't want to go from one extreme to another. Okay. So I use uh, magnesium glycinate, which doesn't affect your intestinal flow, but it does prevent you from getting the uh, fast heart rate. Okay. And so I have them take it twice a day. But I also, you know, you know, you have to take thyroid. Every, almost every kind of thyroid except one, you have to take on an empty stomach and not eat or drink coffee or anything but water for 20 minutes. So it's a little more difficult to take this medicine, but it but it works great and it does fix what ails you. Right. And if you're on it, in general, you have to stay on it the and rest of your life. And if you do life. take something, like if you take your other medicines or, or, and you haven't waited 20 minutes or you eat breakfast and you haven't waited, it won't cause you any harm. It just means that that, that dose of thyroid won't be effective. It won't be as effective as it would have been. So it's like okay. taking a lower dose. Yeah. All right. So... So those are the those are the things we we do to make the thyroids work without complication. Now there's always there's always somebody who might have a fast heart rate or they take or they take two pills and they forgot or something like that. But but this is something that we always go over and give people handouts on how to do this and to make sure they're taking the right supplements. So we right. have them at the office to make sure they can take them and get them as they're leaving. Right. So you do that as a uh, an ancillary treatment to replacing the, the hormones of testosterone and estrogen mm-hmm. in pellet form. Right. But it's a thing you always want to check because that is the the thyroid is the primary uh, energy providing uh, metabolizer. hormone metabolizer yeah, it uh, in your the body. Metabolism. So if you and you if you don't have that, you set yourself up. Well, the other two hormones also you need to have those to protect your heart to protect your uh, blood vessels. Uh, so you don't get a stroke, but you you have to. If you don't have thyroid, your LDL cholesterol goes way up. Your total cholesterol goes up. I mean, by taking thyroid, it drops it, so it goes to normal. So you don't have to take a statin. So oftentimes, it will fix other things in your body and prevent you from having a heart attack. All right. So what we're talking about is if you just follow lab results and your blood tests come back and your doctor says, oh, your thyroid is fine, but you have all these symptoms and you have these concerns, talk to them more about it and say, I'm concerned, I've been told, I've found out, 
these are things that are, are signifiers of a problem with thyroid or mm -hmm. other things, and I want to talk to you about mm -hmm. them, and, and I want to see what we need to do about it. That's right, and get yourself treated because you'll have other illnesses if you don't. It's very important to, to treat this particular hormonal deficit. And as always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.